Welcome to the podcast editing and support show. My name is Dave. Are you ready? Are you ready? Let's go. We're going to start the episode right now. Happy to have you here. Let's do this. Hey, welcome back to the podcast. Glad to have you back. Yeah, we're going to be looking at setting up your Zoom settings for your podcast. Now, not everyone uses Zoom, and that's fine, but some of us do. And I just want to make sure that you have the settings correct to help you on the back end when you get your files back, that you can use these files the right way and give yourself some flexibility and what you get back when you're done and you hit stop recording on your Zoom call. So some basic setup settings for your Zoom. So as you listen to this and you're at your computer or wherever you are, pull up your Zoom settings, pull up Zoom, and let's walk through this together. I know there's many other places and a lot of podcast gurus are going to send you elsewhere. But from what I've seen, many of my guests who are not tech savvy at all, understand Zoom because of the pandemic and being stuck at home and doing online meetings. There's a familiarity with Zoom that they don't have with all of these other higher end alternatives. So instead of throwing it out and saying Zoom is terrible, which you'll hear a lot in Facebook groups, I'm just saying that many of your guests and many of your clients' guests will use Zoom. So there's always ways to make it sound better. And I've got some ideas on what you can say to your clients or if you're a podcast host, what you can do to make your Zoom work the best for you in 2024. All right, so here we go. So as I mentioned, not everyone uses Zoom, and there's this kind of hatred for Zoom. Unfortunately, anybody that is in the know will tell you probably that Zoom is a terrible idea for your podcast. It's got its limitations, but it is does so much more than even just recording an interview. There's so many pieces to Zoom that it's worth looking into. And again, if you're a if you're a podcast editor and your clients are giving you back files in Zoom, they can give you back better files if you simply go through this podcast with them and the notes in the show notes to encourage them to do their settings properly to make it easier for you. And again, if you're a podcast host, please do this, these settings today for your future episodes to make it easier for everyone. Okay, so you got 10 different things we're going to talk about. I'll try to keep it short concise. And again, if you want to refer as we go through or after the fact, go to the show notes. All the information will be there with links and everything we talk about. Definitely go download and set up your Zoom. Zoom works for Macs, PCs, Apple, iPhone, Android, all of those things, which makes it pretty widely available to non-techie guests. Remember, non-techie guests, we want to give them the easiest experience possible to get on podcasts. Uh, there's a free version of Zoom and it has like a 40 minute limit at the time of recording for free and then it just stops. And if you're not careful, you'll be like mid-sentence and it just cuts out. So 40 minutes for free and then they have different plans, pro, business, and enterprise. And Go to zoom.us and you'll see all the information at the time that you listen to this because the numbers I'm seeing on screen could change, you know, because that's what people like to do is charge us more. Uh, the pro plan at the time of recording uh, gives you 24 hours of group calls or for up to 100 guests. Obviously, you're not going to do that on a podcast. It also unlocks transcriptions and cloud recording. Now, just a thought around cloud recording. I really don't like cloud recording to be uh, very upfront and transparent. I prefer to download it the files to my computer. So that's how I do it. Check out cloud recording if you're interested. But that's the first thing. Go download the app. Go download Zoom at zoom.us. That's the first step. If you don't do that, none of the rest of the steps are going to mean anything to you. All right. Step two, you need to set up your microphone and headphones. Uh, get a good quality out of recording by using maybe a USB microphone if you're using a desktop computer uh, using your the computer built into your laptop or whatever is probably not the best uh, audio experience for your listener. And again, 
We're doing this for listeners. We're not just doing this for ourselves. So whatever you can do to make it sound better for your listener, that's good. So a external microphone and headphones plugged in to a computer is probably one of the easiest ways to do this. And also your computer plugged in, not Wi-Fi, plugged in to your modem directly so that you do you have a constant connection to the internet and you're not going to battle with Wi-Fi outages. That is probably the safest way to do your recording through Zoom. Uh, and yeah, that's what you need to do. So what I would tell you to do then, once you have your microphone plugged in and your headphones plugged in, uh, to select your mic as the input, click on the gear icon to open your settings, click on the audio tab, you'll see on the left hand side, and then select your microphone from the drop down menu. You'll see a list of whatever's plugged into your device at that time. That's number two. Set up your microphone, plug in your headphones, and you're all set to go. Number three, adjust your settings for the best audio. One thing Zoom does, it does compress your audio, which reduces the audio quality of the file. These audio settings can help make it a little bit better to kind of combat what Zoom is doing to your audio. Some of the more expensive paid options with the bigger plans and fancy bells and whistles won't do what Zoom does around compression of your audio. And that's why a lot of audio people, especially in audio editing circles, are not a big fan of Zoom. I get all that. And again, I'm just saying, on behalf of non-techie guests, and if you've ever been presented with a Zoom recording, that's why this episode's existing. I'm not here to convince you to switch to Zoom. Okay, we're still friends? Okay, we're still friends. Game okay, going. you To adjust your audio settings in Zoom, I would suggest you go to Zoom, click on the gear icon we mentioned before, and you're under your settings, go to the audio tab, and select low under suppress background noise. Select show option to enable original sound and select high fidelity music mode. These settings will definitely help to increase and make your output better than it will be if you do not go through these steps. And then under recording, this is really important and a lot of people don't do this, causing a lot of questions in Facebook groups because they'll get one track for your audio recording from Zoom with the two voices mixed into one single track. What you really want when you're doing audio editing and what you want to provide to your auto audio editor is two separate tracks, one for you and one for your guest or for all the different guests. This is something that's very important. So under recording in your, in your setup, you want to click on recording and it'll say local recording, and you have a destination where it's going to go to. You can set that up. Uh, I would advise you to click on the second one where it says record a separate audio file for each participant. If that's not checked, make sure you check that because that's really, really important. That will give you those two, three, four, whatever, however many guests you have, separate tracks for everyone. The beauty of that, if your dog... If your dog barks on your track, it won't bleed into the other person's track. And you can isolate and do a lot more cleaner edits with separate tracks for all the voices in your podcast. So do that. Save your podcast editor a turning gray really early, and it'll help everyone in the, in the, in the end. Step four, optimize your recording environment. We've talked about this before on other podcast episodes. Definitely make sure that you pick a nice quiet place in your where you're going to record for your guest. Advise your guest. Advise your client to, to advise their guest to find that nice quiet space with minimal background noise and lots of carpet and soundproofing or blankets or soft surfaces wherever they're recording. If there's an echo or you can clap your hands and you can hear it, that sound and it bounces. You don't want that to come through a microphone. So advise them to have a nice soft space to record in. And for the best practices, always remember and instruct your clients or 
you as a podcast host, instruct your guests to check their internet connection, double check that their microphone is set up, maybe even tap their microphone to make sure that they're actually using the microphone that they think they're using in front of their face. They might be set to a different microphone. So a simple tap of the microphone before you hit record will help identify that in advance and ensure your computer is plugged in or fully charged so you're ready to go. And you, But the one thing with Zoom you always have to remember is you only get one shot at Zoom interviews. Really important that you optimize to get the best results after the recording is done. Step five, you're going to invite your guests to the meeting. You click new meeting and you can invite them. You can create the pre-schedule. You can schedule into the future so that you have a, diff- a time, date, and a, all of that. It will give you... I would encourage you to, when you set it up, name the the file. So for me, mine says my meeting. And then I just type in with, and I copy the email address of my guest and put it in this, the, the title of the recording. So it'll say my meeting with truemediasolutions.ca at gmail.com. And the, the reason I do that is... I now have an email that I can pull out and I can find in Calendly. I can find in my inbox, in my sent folder. And then I also have a separate document that I keep for every guest that I can marry everything up to to it. So when I'm looking at my files, my file naming in my Zoom output, I can see all the different meetings I've had and I can quickly identify who's who just by the email address in the file name. Works really well encourage you to do that. When you set up your meeting uh, for the future, for example, or the day of, or that in the moment, you will get a a link. Uh, One thing I would suggest to everyone to do is to create a, a, a unique link for each recording. Here's what happened to me. I got a link from someone to be on their show. And uh, so I showed up like a couple minutes before the interview And I see that the host is already live, like his host is already active. So I click the link they provided to me, and I basically walked in on them interviewing someone before me at the end of their interview. All of a sudden, Dave pops up on the screen, and they're like, who are you? (laughs) So what the host had done is he had one link, one single link, and he gave it to everybody. So everybody had the exact same link. So anyone at any time could jump into an active recording and just pop up on the screen because you gave me the same link you gave Buddy. So don't do that. Please don't do that. And uh, they weren't impressed with me, but then I had to explain to them what they had done and they fixed it. So avoid all that. Create a new link every single time for your guests. Then you won't get all mixed up and no one will be embarrassed. Like what happened to me? Uh, your guest does not have to download the app to accept a call to be on your Zoom thing, which is great. They can simply click the link and open it within their browser on their phone, their computer. However, they, it's one click, really simple for them. Again, that's an advantage to Zoom. Some of the other software platforms out there that do on online recording require you to, you know, download a, the Google whatever, and all that stuff. And people are like, I don't know how to do that. So again, another reason why Zoom is very user-friendly for your guests. You can tell I'm kind of on a kick there with your guests. Uh, Number six, run a pre-flight check. This will help with any possible things that could pop up. This is really helpful for you to provide to your client or as a host for you to remind yourself to make sure that you have, your guest has, and you have, earbuds or headphones, a quiet space to record, and a strong internet connection. And give guests a brief rundown on Zoom if they've never used it before. Because I've actually had people, even in 2024, who have jumped on the screen with me for the very first time, and they're like, what is this Zoom thing? It, it happens. Uh, and, and don't talk down to them. Uh, before you record, close any unnecessary apps, if you got like 35, like I do, 35 browser tabs open on your computer 
on the internet. You might want to scale that back a little bit because everything takes a little piece of your computer to do whatever it's doing in the behind the scenes. Let's make it easier for your computer to not get all choked up during your interview. The, be the, be the more you can reduce, the better. Number seven, turn on the original sound and click to record. When you are ready to start the interview, turn on original sound in the top left corner and then click and then press record. Don't worry if you don't start, doesn't start right away. You can always trim the intro and in post-production. Your Zoom recording will automatically download when you hit end meeting. So that's going to happen in the background. And number eight, import your files into your editing software. Once the call ends, you'll get a folder with separate audio and video because you've done the step before and click that little checkbox. And if you have a paid account, you can record to the cloud. You'll also get a file with complete transcriptions of your meeting. So that's the part where I'm like, yeah, I'm not a big fan of the cloud recording. You can drop your M4A files, what you get back from Zoom, right into Audacity or GarageBand or your other audio editor. And you can just drag and drop it right into your, into your program and you're good to go. Step nine, you can edit the interview, st stack each guest audio up on screen, move them back and forth. You'll see where one person's talking and asking a question and then they're silent. And then you'll see when your guest starts talking and then they're silent. And you can match them up like a puzzle and go, I can tell when one person stops and one person starts. And you can visually see it without even any play, which is great when you look at it on your screen. That's how I do it. I don't use like the script to do my editing. I use Audacity. So that's how I do mine. Step 10, publish your podcast episode. And again, we've talked about this in the past, but publish your episode to your, your hosting platform of choice. For me, I use Spotify for podcasters and Buzzsprout, which I really love. Buzzsprout's awesome. Upload your episode and you are good to go. One thing I've noticed too when I look at my Zoom file, if for some reason my download did not convert, when you see that converting meeting recording, I know once I accidentally hit the stop converting thing in the bottom right corner of the converting meeting recording thing that pops up after the interview, and I got nothing. And I'm like, oh no. So if that ever happens to you, just a little guide for you. When you go to your Zoom folder where your downloads would be and you click on it, you will see uh, the Zoom icon. It'll say like audio record, possibly. Um, but there'll be these three little icons that I see on my screen at the moment. They have the blue Zoom icon and it says double click to convert. That is your undownloaded files. So you simply just double click those and it will then reinitiate the download. Your stuff's still there. You don't, don't freak out. It's still there. So double click on those and you can get your copy when you have it set to download to your hard drive, to your computer, in place of sending it to the cloud. I actually had a recording that went to the cloud and never arrived. So just keep that in mind. So that's a little bit about how to set up your Zoom and kind of some things that you need to keep in mind. I had somebody asking me as well, can I record only audio on Zoom? The answer is yes. After you end the meeting, uh, Zoom automatically converts your audio file to an audio only M4A file and an MP4 file, which is audio and video together. Uh, but even you can shut off your cameras during recording. I did an interview with someone in India this week and his Wi-Fi was unstable. So to keep the recording, we both shut our cameras off and we were fine. I couldn't see him and he couldn't see me. It made it a little bit more interesting to know when to speak and when not to speak. But the, everything I got back from him was great. So that's a great way to get around it. If you find you're having problems, 
that both you and your guests shut off your cameras, record the audio only, you're good to go. Some of the other tools, and I know you'll hear these in Facebook groups all the time, and generally the people who are advising you to use these tools have a affiliate link, which they'll make money from. If you use it, I don't. Uh, but you can also use uh, things like Zencaster, Squadcast, Riverside, StreamYard, on and on and on and on. There'll probably be like a 10 more after this is posted. So there's a lot of different alternatives out there for you to use. Use the one that works best for you. My advice is always to take two different platforms that you're considering. Go to YouTube, type in the two names. So Squadcast versus Zoom. Put it under YouTube and see what you get, because then you'll get a comparison of the two. That's how I make decisions on some of the things that I'm using in podcasting. I like to pit two companies against each other to see their strengths and their weaknesses in comparison to a different platform. Really works well. Love to hear what you're using and get your thoughts about the tools that work for you, because there are so many, and there are probably more opinions than there are tools about the tools that are out there. Use what works for you. Do your research. Don't look down on a great platform that's been there for us all the way through the pandemic. And long before that, Zoom has been a great option. And again, I'm going to say it one more time before we go, is that if you are looking for a tool that is user-friendly for non-techie guests, and you just have to have the recording. You just need it done. Zoom is a great option. Don't let people tell you it's not. It's a great option that is very user-friendly, very welcoming, very simple to use. I love it. I use it. I, I've tried other platforms, which I won't name. I've tried other platforms and had way too many problems. A lot of shrugs of shoulders, hands in the air, like, sorry, lost your file. Don't know what we can tell you. Uh, and that's never good. So Zoom has always been there for me. I've never lost an episode ever. If that helps you. In over four years of podcasting, eight different shows, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of interviews around the world, I've never had an issue with Zoom. So there you go. That's my thoughts. Would love to hear your thoughts. Reach out through the podcast website, all the information in the show notes, and we'd love to get together with you and talk about your podcast and the tools that work for you. Thanks for being here. We'll talk soon. Take care. Hey, thanks for being here for the podcast editing and support show. Again, if you're looking for support for your podcast editing, head over to True Media Solutions. .ca. would love to talk to you there. Great episodes coming up here on the podcast editing and support show. We'll talk to you soon. Take care. Hey!